When circuit elements are wired in series, that means that they're connected in such a way that any current that passes through one, that same current has to pass through the other. So any charge carriers going through one resistor in the circuit shown has to go through the other two resistors. Because of this, current is the same everywhere in a series in a circuit. But then since the same charge carriers are traveling through that series, the way that they share the electric potential has to be split. So I'm going to look at the path of individual charge carriers through a series circuit. So if I have one positive charge going through the series circuit, it's going to leave for a positive charge out of the long end of the battery on a circuit schematic. And it's going to be carrying the full electric potential it was given by the battery, which is V. Now, if these two resistors are equal, it's going to give that electrical potential to each res resistor in proportion. So in this case, it'll be the same exact voltage going to each one. So after it goes through R1, if it entered with the full battery voltage V, it's going to leave with half. And then it'll get the other half of the voltage to the second resistor. And then it's going to leave both resistors with zero volts and then go back to the battery to restore the electrical potential and then go around the circuit again. When multiple resistors are wired in the same circuit, there's something called the equivalent or total resistance. When they're wired in series, it leads to more resistance overall. So these two resistors here, R1 and R2, are in series. They have the same current, which I'll call I. That's also the current leaving the battery. However, they have to share the electric potential or voltage of the battery. So the battery voltage in total is V. Resistor 1 would get V1 of voltage, and resistor 2 would get V2. And because the voltages add, the total voltage, which is the battery voltage, is the sum of V1 and V2. And then from Ohm's law, V equals IR, the total current leaving the circuit, which is always the same, times the equivalent resistance equals IR1 plus IR2. And in this case, uh, the currents cancel. And I get that the equivalent resistance when resistors are wired in series, in this case is R1 plus R2. But in general, the equivalent resistance is the sum of the resistors that are in series. Here's an example that looks at resistors in series and asks to find the potential difference across each resistor. And in this case, I'm going to use Ohm's law. I'm going to do so multiple times. So when you're dealing with a circuit, you can use Ohm's law for either the whole circuit or for the individual parts of the circuit. So I'm going to start off and use Ohm's law for the entire circuit. Uh, the total resistance is 3 plus 9 plus 6. And that's going to be 18 ohms. And now I can use Ohm's law for my entire circuit. So 36 volts, that's the total voltage in the battery, equals IR. So it equals the current times 18, which means that the current in the circuit is 2 amps. So there's 2 amps through the 3 ohm resistor, through the 9 ohm resistor, and through the 6 ohm resistor. And then I can use Ohm's law again to find the potential difference across each resistor. So that's going to be V equals IR. So for here, it'd be 2 times 3. Now I'd get 6 volts here, 18 volts here, and 12 volts here. And I'm going to go through and look at what that word potential difference means. So the battery gives. 36 volts of electric potential. So when current leaves the circuit, it's going at a rate of 2 amps. And the charge is moving. They're carrying 36 volts of electric potential. So if I go right before the first resistor, there's 36 volts. What a resistor does is it takes the volts away. It uses the volts. So when I leave the resistor, there's only 30 volts left. But the current hasn't slowed down. It's still moving at 2 amps. So then it gets to the 9 ohm resistor and has 30 volts going into it, loses 18 volts, and then has 
12 volts left, but still traveling at a rate of 2 amps. And then for the last resistor, it enters with 12 volts, drops 12, and then leaves with 0 volts. And then it enters the battery with 0 volts. This is the case where the potential difference is positive, and it leaves with 36 volts. So when I go around to circuit each individual charge carrier, it's always moving at a rate of 2 amps. But as it goes through the loop, it's losing volts through each resistor until it gets down to 0, and then goes through the battery again. When circuit elements are wired in parallel, they're wired in such a way that a charge going to a junction in a circuit, such as here, here, or here, has to split so it can only go through one branch of the parallel circuit. Now, since the individual charges are splitting up, each individual charge will carry the electric potential of the battery. So each branch gets the same voltage, but the amount of charge and the rate of current in each branch is going to be different. So in terms of individual charge carriers, this is a simplification here. But if I have four charges going through the circuit with two resistors, if they're equal resistance, half will go through one branch, half will go down the other. So here I show two charges leaving the battery. They each have the full battery voltage. They split up in parallel, again, each carrying the battery voltage, and then go through each branch individually. Um, in this case, they use the battery voltage going through the two resistors. And then after the parallel branch, they join together again and go back to the battery. When you add resistors in parallel, what you're doing is you're actually adding an additional path to the circuit. And what that's going to do is actually lower the equivalent resistance. So in this case, I have two resistors in parallel. I have a current leaving the battery, which I'll call I total. And some of it's going to go to R1, some of it's going to go to R2. I'll call these currents I1 and I2. But in both cases, the resistors get the full battery voltage, since voltage is the same in parallel. So using the fact that the current is split, I can say that the total current equals I1 plus I2. And then from Ohm's law, current is voltage over resistance. So I have the battery voltage over the equivalent resistance equals the battery voltage over R1 plus the battery voltage over R2. And then the battery voltage cancels there. And I get that the reciprocal of equivalent resistance is the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistors. All right, the second example here asks to calculate the total current in the circuit shown. This is a circuit where three resistors are in parallel. And they're all in parallel connected to a 12 volt battery. So they all get 12 volts of potential difference which means that the charges going through each branch all carry 12 volts, and those 12 volts are all dropped in the resistors. Now, from Ohm's law, I can calculate the current through each individual resistor. So 12 over 6 is 2 amps. 12 over 3 would be there's 4 amps here, and 12 over 2 is 6 amps. And then current adds in parallel, so the total current it's going to be 2 plus 4 plus 6. So there's 12 amps of current in the circuit. That means leaving the battery, there's 12 amps of current. And every charge carrier in that current is carrying 12 volts of electric potential. And then at the nodes here, the current's going to split. So at the first node, I have 2 amps going down, and I have 10 amps going to the right. But those amps are all carrying the same amount of energy, which is 12 volts. And then I get to a second node. I have 10 amps going in. I have 6 amps going to the right and 4 amps down. And I can go to the bottom here. I have 6 amps carrying 0 volts. It meets up with 4 amps carrying 0 volts. So I have 10 amps and 0 volts. Meets up with the 2 amps in the 6 ohm resistor and it recombines to be 12 amps, which was the battery current. 
and it's carrying zero volts, those volts are restored again in the battery. The last example is a compound circuit. So these resistors, there's a combination of series and parallel. So I have to figure out the simplest combination I can make of series or parallel, and then narrow the circuit down to what's called the equivalent circuit, where there's one equivalent resistor, and I'm going to solve for the current that way. So the first combination I can make is that any current flowing through this 2 ohm resistor has to flow through the 4 ohm resistor. So I'm just going to go ahead and combine them. So that forms one equivalent resistor of 6 ohms. I get 12 ohms here. And this 8 ohm resistor is still there. And now up top, I have a node right here. And this is where current has a choice to go to the 6 ohm resistor or the 12 ohm resistor. So that makes those two resistors in parallel. So I'm going to combine those two. So I have 1 over the equivalent resistance here equals 1 over 12 plus 1 over 6. And when I solve for R there, I would get 4 ohms. And I'm going to reach all the circuit again. So I have my equivalent resistance of 4 ohms. Now I have the 8 ohm resistor and the equivalent 4 ohm resistor left. Those two are in series. So I'm going to do one last combination. So for the whole circuit, the equivalent resistance is 8 plus 4, which is 12 ohms. And the voltage in the circuit is 36 volts from the battery. So for my total current in the circuit, it's the total battery voltage of 36 volts over the equivalent resistance for the whole circuit of 12 ohms. And I get that this circuit leaving the battery has 3 amps of current. So one last thing to note about this current, there's a node right here or a junction point where the current splits. And more current's going to go down the path with less resistance. So there's two paths current can go down. It can go through a 12 ohm resistor, or it can go through this right branch, which has a 2 and a 4 ohm resistor, or a total resistance of 6 ohms. So the ratio of the currents is going to be 2 to 1. But in this case, the 6 ohm resistor is smaller, so it'll get twice the current. So if I have 3 amps in total going into the node, the 12 ohm resistor gets 1 amp. And then the 6 ohm resistance, which is half of that, is going to get twice the current. Because that's what resistance is. It's the ability to slow down current. So if there's less resistance in a branch, it'll get more current. <laughs>